Namo Vishnu Pada, Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale, Shimati Bhakti Vikasha Swami Niti Namine. Namo Vishnu Pada, Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale, Shimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine. Namaste Saraswate Deve, Gauravani Pracharine, Nirvishesh, Shunyavadi, Pashtata Deshitarine. Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadhadar, Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktarinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. I welcome you all for this Brahma Samhita discussions. Today we are um, going through Shloka 53. Dharma tapapa nichaya shutaya stapamsi Brahma dikita patagava dayas chajivaha yaddatta matra vibhava prakata prabhava. Govinda Madi Purusham Tamaham Bajami. Translation I adore the primeval Lord Govinda, by whose conferred power are maintained the manifested potencies that are found to exist of all virtues, all vices, the Vedas, the penances, and all jivas, from Brahma to the meanest insect. All right, so here we see that in this shloka of Brahma Samhita, Krishna is glorified by being described as a source of all powers invested in the, all the potencies that are found to exist in all virtues, in, virtues, in all dharma. You can say word by word, dharma, virtue, atta also, papa nichaya, all the vices. And Dharma and Papa also possible by the Lord. The potency of Dharma to purify it, and the potency of Papa to infect, also sanctioned by the Lord. Shrutaya, Vedas, Tapamsi, all the austerities, Brahmadiya, from Brahma, Kita Pataka, only insects. So Jiva, all the Jivas, whatever power they have, whoever they are in the universe. Demigods, they have different powers. Birds, they have different powers. Fishes, they have different powers. Fish can have power to live under the water. Can you or me? No, we can for a few seconds, few minutes. No? And uh, all the powers, achintya shaktis, coming from the Lord. So this is uh, just amazing shloka, basically, that describes that amazing potencies of the Lord, which could be seen, present in all these things listed here, in Dharma, in Papa, in Shrutis, tapa, with Tapasyas, in Jivas, in all living entities. Brahma has amazing potencies to create, and uh, Shiva has to destroy it. But ba Bhagavan has both potencies. Birds can fly. I cannot fly. I can speak. I can walk on two legs, sometimes on four. But I cannot fly. But bird can fly. But Krishna can do both. Krishna can have human form and he can fly like a bird also. Devatas are described. They don't touch the ground. They walk one foot above the earth, not touching the ground when they come to the earthly planet. They have that potency. Rishis, they have potencies to read the mind. Better not to read minds. In Kali Yuga, <laughs> you'll find so many things. <laughs> <laughs> but Krishna has this potency. That's the point. No? So whatever potency you see anywhere, in anything, comes from Krishna and Krishna possesses them. So can you imagine what kind of person is Krishna? He must be amazing. Anything, anything that anybody has, or, you know, everything is coming from him. And make it possible by him, by his potency. So all these potencies are in him. So this is amazing, no? Dharmata Papa Nisha Shutayasta Vedas to deliver us, to give us knowledge. That also comes from Krishna. No. <coughs> okay. So in this world of repeated birth and death, Srila Jiva Goswami comments here that there are so many forms of religions also. That also made possible by Krishna. Some people are interested in material, some are interested in merging into Brahman, some are interested to simply, you know, enjoy, go to heaven maximum. Some, they don't know even about the heaven, simply they want to enjoy now. 
you know, all those are possible by Krishna also. Processes also. So all these manifested, whatever they show their own potency manifested, actually should not be bewildered. We should not be bewildered as a devotees. We should know that all these potencies are coming from Krishna. Whatever anything does great, somebody builds a big building. Wow, potency given by Krishna. Material given by Krishna, intelligence given by Krishna, idea given by Krishna. And to make it possible, that also, uh, that endeavor also approved by Krishna. So this is this is an interesting shloka. Okay, we'll go to the purport. Um, we'll go to the purport. And uh, what is the shloka Jiva Goswami quotes here, explaining commentary on this shloka? Simply he quotes, Aham Sarasya Pravo Mata Saraparvartate. I'm the source of everything. Due to me, everything operates. Aham sarasya prabhava, prabhavaha. From me, everything comes. Mata saram pravarta. Everything originates from me. Due to me, everything operates. Now, this is essential. How the shloka continues, everybody knows. Famous shloka. Iti matva. If you know this, if we understand this, the Krishna is source of everything and everything is due to him, everything operates due to him, what will happen? Iti matva bhajantema. We'll worship him, Buddha, with intelligence, bhava, with all our hearts, samanvita. So that's the result of having knowledge of Krishna. Why we are discussing all those things? We want to simply love God. Why you need to hear all of these things? How can you love him if you don't know him? That's the idea. So. We are discussing all these amazing potencies of the Lord and all these different aspects of His supremacy. This is what Brahma Samhita establishes, the supremacy of the Lord over everything. And then now the link is given that everything that you see, any ability, any power, any form, anything that has any capacity to do anything, it comes from Krishna. It's amazing. Okay, so we'll see the purport now that... Um, Parapat is <clears throat> like this. By dharma is meant the allotted functions of vana and ashrama manifested by the 20 dharma shastras on the authority of the Vedas. So now what is happening is the jiva comes to material world, leaving the spiritual world in the false hope to be in joy on its own without serving the Lord. Correct. So jivas, they come to material world to enjoy. So therefore the shastras are given to give that facility that okay, you enjoy, but you should also back, go back home, back to Godhead. You should also understand that this is temporary place. This is not place of eternal enjoyment. This is a false enjoyment, temporary enjoyment. It's not going to satisfy you. So the Dharma Shastras are given, and according to condition, Novana and Ashrama, different, different rules are given. Those who are more sattvic or covered with sattva gun, Brahmanas, they have different duties, different system, how to come out of their condition age. Those who are a little more covered, Kshatriyas, by, by the Rajagun, they have different process, different medicine. Prabhupada gives this example, just like, you know, different people come to the medical, to doctor, and he gives different medicine. Huh? There was that ridiculous uh, example that, that uh, the house lady and maid servant both they got the fever, and maid servant had higher fever, and the housewife complained, "How she can have more fever than me? I'm in charge for the house." Huh? <laughs> so, <laughs> now, well, anyway, the Prabhupada gives that like, another example that uh, for different disease, doctor gives different medicine, and you cannot claim why you giving this medicine to him, not to me. We have different disease. No, we all have equal rights. No, huh? you should give same. Why you discriminate? But you have different disease. Yeah? So people, jivas are covered either by sattva gun or by raja gun, kshatriya, or mix of raja and tamas, vaishyas, or tamagun, shudras. Of course, everything is combination of nothing is pure. And nothing, there's no pure sattva in material world. There's no pure rajas in material. Everything is mixed, but prominent. Say it's a prominent. And combinations of those are multiple. So therefore, the consciousness, original pure consciousness of Jiva is covered by different degrees of ignorance. And according to that, there are different duties. Therefore, different duties are given to help you advance. Therefore, it says, better you do your duty properly, than follow other duty 
even your duty, even if you're doing imperfectly, is better to still follow than doing other duties perfectly. So therefore it is explained. Okay, so here I mentioned 20 Dharma Shastras on the authority of Vedas. Dharma Shastras comes in the Smritis. Vedas are Shrutis, that which is heard, and Smritis, the great rishis now explain how do we practice Vedas, how do we apply Vedic teachings, how do we apply all these rules, regulations in our life. So these are called the Dharma Shastras. We'll deal, deal with this in a moment. Of these two divisions, Varna Dharma, Varna and Ashrama, is that function which is the outcome of the distinguished natures of the four Varnas, Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Shudras. So this is Varna. And Ashrama means Dharma is that function which is appropriate to the respective ashramas or the stations of those being belong to the four castes, Brahman, Chaitanya, Grihas, Vanaprasa, Sanyas. Correct. So you have, according to your quality, according to your Varna, either you are Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, or Shudra, and according to ashrama situation when you live, you may be Brahmachari, you may be Grihasta, you may be Vanaprasta, you may be Sanyas. So this is called Varna Ashrama system. Divisions, Guna Karma Vipchatur, Varnya Maya Srishtam, Guna Karma Vibhagasha, according to qualities and activities prescribed duties. So this is how one is classified. It's not by birth, it's not Janma Karma. Prabhupada so much spoke against by birth. Though, of course, in those days when you're born in Brahman family, you'll be trained as a Brahmana also. No? But uh, later on, when without training, people just maintain, I'm born by Brahmin by birth. No? No? I'm Brahmin by birth. Simply, I'm, you know. So it doesn't work like that. Guna karma, guna, quality must be there. Quality must be visible. And there is all discussion about that. Okay, but now what is the point? These different dharmas, different duties are prescribed because of this different condition nature, according to different, different uh, positions. So Brahmana could be Brahmachari, at the beginning, then Grihasta, then Vanaprasta, then Sanyas. Kshatriya could be Brahmachari, Grihasta, Vanaprasta. But Sanyas is not recommended traditionally. Then goes on for Vaishya, Brahmachari, and Grihasta. Like that. There are some different, different uh, prescribed duties given. And then again, duty for men, duty for women. Different. Correct? So, all this is explained. All customary activities of mankind have been targeted in these twofold divisions. All the customary activities, all the duties will be prescribed by these Dharma Shastras according to Varna and Ashrama. So that mankind, that people know how to behave, how to make society which is conducive for Krishna consciousness, which is conducive for moksha, dharma, artha, kama, moksha. But moksha must be there. Dharma, follow religious principles. For sake of what? Preliminaries for sake of enjoyment, for sake of being happy, say, get, getting artha and karma. Today, dharma is followed for artha and karma. People go to temple asking for material benefits, to church, to masjid. They ask for material benefits. But ultimately, dharma is meant for moksha. Correct? We know dharma is meant for loving God. But ultimately, that, that all four should be in the society. You see, the Vedic system is a gradual system. We are, we are rapid forces, ISKCON, rapid forces. Chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, and boom, immediately one lifetime you, from lower than the Shudra of nature comes, bypass Shudras, Vaishyas, Kshatriyas, Brahmanas, and sit on top of everyone and uh, say, Hare Krishna, I'm liberated soul. <laughs> Possible because of the power of the holy name. That's the process. That's what is teaching of Prabhupada and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And you can see those who follow strictly you can see result. You can see Prabhupada's disciples coming from all kinds of backgrounds, foregrounds, or any other grounds. And uh, you can see the success. You can see the result. You can see phalam. You can see the pure source. You can see dedicated devotees. You can see pure devotees actually did that due to the power of the holy name. But that's not uh, exactly Vedic Vedic system. This is the Yuga Dharma. This is special concession for people in Kali Yuga and special mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Otherwise, Vedic system is slow grinder. Vedic system is go through the Varnasha. Then slowly but safely, slowly but safely you go on 
performing your duties the next lifetime, the next lifetime you progress up and up and up from Tamagun to Rajagun, Rajagun to Satvagun, from Satvagun to Shuddha Satva. It's a gradual, gradual process, it's safe. It's much more safe, it's much more um, uh, all-inclusive because all society can follow automatically. You are born in one ashram, that's it. You are part of the machine. You are going to progress, you know. But what happened in Kali Yuga? That system is broken. One ashram collapsed. It doesn't work. Nobody follows his duty. Nobody knows. Nobody is aware. Nobody is trained. Nobody has Shakti potency to follow, to stick to his duty. It's a mess. So Bhagavan said, just change Hare Krishna. Just forget it. You can't follow anything, you people of Kali Yuga. <laughs> Janama Jayate Shudra. Kalao Shudra Sambhava. So, so therefore, this concession is that. But we should understand why this Vedic system, why these divisions, what is the purpose? And uh, you understand that it's better to have a society in which we live, which is conducive for Krishna Bhakti, than uh, modern society. So all these things we'll discuss. Okay, let's, let's see this Dharma Shastras a little bit. What is this all about? Dharma is translated here as a virtue. Bhagavatam gives the shloka. Dharma mulam hi Bhagavan sarva veda mayo harihi smritam cha tad vidham rajan yena chatma prasidati. Now this is interesting shloka. Dharma mulam, the root of religious principles. He Bhagavan definitely is Krishna, Bhagavan. Sarva veda maya. The essence of all Vedic knowledge. Veda is just Sarve, Aha Meva Veda, Krishna, correct? Smritamcha, Smritis, Dharma Shastras included, Manu Smriti, you heard, we heard so many times, no? And then what happens? Atma, the soul, mind, and the body, and everything, Prasidati, becomes fully satisfied. So, what is the translation? The Supreme Being, Personality of Godhead, is the essence of all Vedic knowledge the root of all religious principles. Now, this is interesting. He is the root of it, and he is the goal of it also. This is important. No, the essence of all Vedic knowledge and the memory of great authorities. The, look how Smritis are translated. Memories of great authorities. Smriti means what is remembered, what we remember from the Vedas and how we see, we see other, other issues practicing, how do we realize it, no? So look how it's translated Smritis, no? If you see word to word, you will see that these are described as Shastras, Smriti Shastras. No? So here the memory of great authorities. <laughs> Prabhupada's translation. O King Yudhishthir, <clears throat> this principle of religion is to be understood as evidence. On the basis of this religious principle, everything is satisfied, including one's mind, soul, and even one's body. What is that to understand? That Krishna is the root of all religious principles, that he is the essence of it, and he is the goal of it. And all the rishis accept this and they follow it. And once we understand this in life, we follow it. And then we become happy in body, mind, and the soul. Everything is satisfied. So you can have relatively, relatively peaceful life in the material world by following Vadnashram. You can't say absolutely, but you can say relatively peaceful life. Yeah? Because if people follow Vadnashram Dharma, all the principles of Dharma Shastras, then uh, society is safe. You will see later on Prabhupada's course. But practically when pious kings were there instituting Vanashan Dharma, there were no thieves, there were no criminals. Prabhupada gives example of Rajas in Kashmir. Somebody lost on pilgrimage some gold and the next day find it back on the same road. Nobody touched it. <laughs> People knew that if I steal, I'll get reaction, I'll get karma for it. And <clears throat> if they didn't know that, at least they knew that if Krieg catches me, my finger will be cut off, you know, or hand or whatever, you know, so fingers or, or hands. So they were following this way or that way, <laughs> but there were no thieves. No? No, there were no thieves. Then you see what society was. There. It was good society. I remember when we traveled in Gujarat, 94, 95 in villages of Gujarat, all doors were open. People will go on the field early in the morning, come back evening, but the house was open all day. Sometimes some older ladies were here and there in the village, but you know, many houses were just empty, open doors. So I asked, hey, you people don't lock the doors. And they say, why? Then people cannot come in, no, if you lock. So you say, oh, that was the point. That was my point, <laughs> you know? But here people are welcome, you know? 
Nowadays, uh, the new apartments in Bangalore and Chennai, how they advertise? Triple locking system. Two bedroom apartments, three bedroom apartments, and then bigger letters, triple locking system with alarm. Then you know who is your neighbor. Where are you going to live? Uh -huh. You need triple locking system, triple lock. Crazy, you know, so all these things. All right, so Prabhupada explaining the purport here. This is Bhagavatam 7 Canto. Vedic knowledge means to understand the Supreme Personality of God, God Krishna. <clears throat> Therefore, whether one speaks of the Vedas, scriptures, religion, or the principles of everyone's occupation or duty, all of them must aim at understanding Krishna, the Supreme Personality of God. Srimad Bhagavatam 126 therefore concludes, Savai Pumsam Parodharmo Yato Bhaktir Adokshajit Haitukya Pratihata Yayatma Supersidati. In other words, religious principle aim at learning how to render transcendent and loving service to the Lord. That service must be unmotivated, unchecked by material conditions. Then human society will be happy in all respects. Prabhupada continues. The Smriti, these are the 20 Dharma Shastras we are discussing. The scriptures following the principles of Vedic knowledge are considered the evidence of Vedic principles. What is the definition of Smriti? It follows the Vedic conclusion. It's not independent. It's not something separate. It's not something different. Sometimes people say, why should I follow Manu Smriti? It's not the Veda. But it's based on Vedic instruction. It follows exactly in the conclusion of Vedic version. This is what it is. Ah, and they are evidence of Vedic principles. Why they are evidence? Because the great rishis explain how to practice in life, how to realize it, how to apply the Vedic function. Smriti, like, like uh, Puranas, you know? Veda says you should surrender to the Supreme. And then Smriti is explained how, how Dhruva Maharaj surrendered, how Bali Maharaj surrendered, how uh, Ambarish Maharaj surrendered. For example, no, they, they show practically how to apply the Vedic conclusion, how to realize God. There are 20 different types of scriptures for following religious principles. Prabhupada speaks in purpose, same 20 Dharma Shastras. And among them, the scriptures of Manu and Yagya Valkya are considered to be all pervading authorities. Look how Prabhupada says, all pervading authorities. But they are most important. In the Yagyavalka Smriti, it is said, immediately he quotes from the same Dharma Shastra, Shruti Smriti Sadachara, Swasya Cha Priyamatmanaha, Samyak Sankalpaja Kamo, Dharma Mulam Idam Smitam. One should learn human behavior from Shruti. The Vedas are Shruti. Okay. And from Smriti, the scriptures following the Vedic principles. Shruti Smriti Sadachara. It's very clear. Shruti Smriti Sadachara. Not only Shruti Sadachara. Shruti Smriti Sadachara. Correct? So that, that should be accepted. Today, when some devotees are arguing, oh, we should not follow Manu. It's not the Veda. Or the simple, we simply chant the holy name. We'll come to that. So. This is what Prabhupada continues explaining in Prabhupad. Shilarupa Goswami Bhakti Rasamri Sindhu says, Shruti Smriti Puranadi Pancharatra Vidhim Vina Aikantiki Harer Bhakti Utpa Taiva Tayaiva Kalpate. The purpose is that to become a devotee, one must follow the principles laid down in Shruti and Smriti. One must follow the cause of Puranas and the Pancharatri Kividi. One cannot be a pure devotee without following Shruti and Smriti. And the Shruti and Smriti, without devotion and service, cannot lead one to the perfection of life. A Prabhupada really nails it, nails it down in this purpose, you know. Not only they have to follow Shruti and Smriti, but you have to, by those rules, the aim should be devotion. The aim should be developing love of God. Otherwise, you become smarter. Simply following rules, regulation, without, without desire, without aim, without actually achieving the goal of developing love of God. So that was the point. Then again, the purpose is lost. The life is lost. All the endeavor is lost. What is this? Shama eva hi keva. Simply useless waste of time. No? If we remember Bhagavatam, if you, and other Puranas also, many scriptures say this. If you do tapasya, what is use of doing tapasya if aim is not Krishna? Correct. What is use of doing it? Is a, is a, what? Aradyo. Aradyo. So, the, the, here, the point, what Prabhupada says, without devotion service, 
what is the use? So the, we should never lose the goal in this, all the rules and regulation, the principles. But we should see what is the detail, what is the principle, how to apply in life, and what is the goal behind it? Yeah? What is the goal behind it? So this is the explained here. Um, Srila Prabhupada explains further in the Bhagavad Gita Paripat 321. The revealed scriptures like Manu Samhita and similar others are considered the standard books to be followed by human society. Thus, the leader's teaching should be based on the principles of such standard shastras. One who desires to improve himself must follow the standard rules as they are practiced by the great teachers. Now Prabhupada speaks here, the leaders teaching, not only the ISKCON leaders, but the government leaders, the society leaders, the politicians, the kings, the teachers in the schools, they should follow these rules. They should imply that the leaders teaching should be based on principles such as standard shastras. No? And uh, Srila Bhakti Nautakur in Jaiva Dharma, he explained this uh, concept, why these Dharma Shastras are important. This is very nicely described. Please, little attention, you can see it's uh, a lot to learn. The living entities deluded by Maya, Srila Bhakti Nautakur writes, find themselves in varying degrees of conditioning. Some are in deep ignorance, others slightly knowledgeable, still others fairly well educated on a wide range of subjects, and so on. The scriptures offer various instructions to the living entities in accordance with the different mentalities, which are defined as adhikar, qualification and eligibility. Adhikar is as varied as the jivas themselves, because everybody has a little different knowledge, different attitude, different desire to learn or not to learn. However, these various states of eligibility are grouped into three categories according to the most obvious symptoms karma adhikar, jnana adhikar, and prema adhikar. Okay, so this is okay, clear. These categories are also specified in the Vedas, wherein corresponding vidhi rules and regulations are specified. So, karma adhikar, if you want material things, you follow those rules of karma kanda. If you want moksha, Jnana Adhikar, you follow those about the merging, controlling senses, mind control, is there. and if you want the Prema Adhikar, develop Bhakti, you follow those with this in the Shast. These do's and don'ts of scripture define the behavior of the living entities grouped according to the three types of Adhikar. This Vidhi is described as Vaidhi Dharma, regulative religious principles. The tendency that impels Jiva to embrace Vaidhi Dharma indicates his Vaidhi nature a love of scriptural discipline. Okay. One who is bereft of this tendency to follow scriptural rules and regulation is unruly, uncultured being, generally pledged to illicit sinful activities. So now, what is implied here? Even if you want material enjoyment, but at least follow the pious way of getting material results. At least follow the karma kanda. At least do the puja, do the yagya, worship the devatas. Follow the Vedic system of getting Artha and Kama. Don't be sinful. But if you disobey, what is it? Unruly, uncultured being pledged to illicit sinful activities. Then you degrade yourself. Then you become sinful. No? People of these types are ostracized from the Vedas and condemned as mlechas. Mlechas means those who do not follow Vedic principles, do, do not follow any rules, just animals, basically, just like an animal, living like an animal. So, the duties, Srila Bhakti Tagur continues, the duties of the three Adhikar groups described in the Vedas have been elaborated upon the wise sages and handed down to us as the Samhita Shastras, scriptures that are colorless to the original Vedic literature. Manu and other great Vedic Panditas have delineated the karma adhikar in 20 dharma shastras. Now you can see, particularly this dharma shastra refers to this karma kanda. Of course, you will find in dharma shastra principles that we also follow, you know, and everybody would follow, any cultured person would follow, you know. But the, the other quotes there may not apply to us as a practitioners of, of bhakti. Similarly, great Munis and philosophers have explained the Jnana Adhikar in Shastra, dealing with the logic and empirical analysis, 
and the great Rishi sages, authorities of Puranas and the Sattvic Tantric thesis have conclusively propounded the duties and principles of bhakti and their practical application. By their chaste adherence to their basis and source, the original Shruti, all these Smriti Shastras are very much part of the Vedas. So why? By their chaste adherence to the basis and source, by following Vedas in their conclusion and in their methodology, then, then uh, therefore Smritis are accepted as, as, uh, as important as the Vedas. And also you will find in Chandogya Upanishad saying this, that Puranas, Smritis, uh, Itihasas, these are all uh, fifth Veda. Chandogya Upanishad, which is Shruti itself. So Shruti says Smritis are fifth Veda. That's it, finish. Puranas, Itihasas, Mahabharata, Ramayan, these are all fifth Veda by Shruti itself. So those who say, we accept on the Shruti and Smriti, they have a little problem. <laughs> they didn't read properly the Shruti's statements. Okay, so these 20 Dharma Shastras are listed differently in different places. Little, some books are listed differently, names, titles of the books or the speakers, better to say. But these are generally accepted. <laughs> First and famous is Manu Smriti, Yagyavalkya Smriti, Parashira Smriti, Brihaspati Smriti, Daksha Smriti, Gautama Smriti, Yama Smriti, Angira Smriti, Atri Smriti, Vashishta Smriti, Vishnu Smriti, Harita Smriti, Harita Smriti, Ushana Smriti, Apastamba Smriti, Samvarta Smriti, Katyayana Smriti. Means these are all names of sages, if you understood. Katyayana Rishi, Katyayana Maharishi is described in the Vedas. For example, Vyasa, Vyasa Dev, Vyasa Smriti, Shankar Smriti, Likita Smriti, Shatatapa Smriti. So these are all names of the great rishis. And they given these rules of conduct, how to Brahmana should behave, how Kshatriya should behave, how Vaishya should behave, how Shudra should behave, how Brahmachari should behave, how Grihastha, what about Banaprasa, what about Sanyas, all given in details. So whenever you are placed in the society, here it is, the manual guide, how to conduct yourself if you want to progress back home, back to Godhead, ultimately. Whether you know it or not, but this is where it will lead to. So basically three things are discussed in this Dharma Shastas. Acha, regulations relating to, relating, uh, relating to performance of religious rites, karma kanda, ceremonies and general duty of man. This is the first, Acha, how to conduct, how to do the yagyas, how to do pujas, how to perform different ceremonies. Uh, how to do Shraddha, how to do this, how to do this. So many details are listed there. Every single thing. Yavahar, civil laws relating to the protection of life, properties with all the rules and practices. This, this is a whole section is there, how to deal when you want to, uh, father dies and then land goes to whom? Or you're buying land or selling land or exchanging land or kings grant you the land. Can King thank the land? So many details are given in these dealings, for example. No? And Prayashita is explained. Atonement for various sins committed. If you, if you add contaminated food, what is Prayashita? If there was dead body in the house, how to purify it? If you did mistake in the puja, how to atone for that? If you harm somebody by mistake, something, some atonement is there for every single thing. Yeah, you know, every single thing. Detail. So these these things you will find in Smriti Shastras. So many, so many details. All kinds of things are explained in daily conduct of a man. And now we don't follow many of this, but we follow whatever was given Hari Bhakti Vilas. Even that we don't follow fully. We follow mostly Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. That those instructions apply to us who practice Bhakti. And we follow whatever Prabhupada told us. Whatever Prabhupada set up standard in our ashrams of cleanliness, of behavior, of daily duties, daily rituals, how to do puja, how to bath, how to apply tila, how to chant. We are following all these rules, which are all based on shastras, based on Vedas, nothing that, nothing new invented, you know? you know? Everything is described there. You know, we don't use left hand for touching pure things, impure things we give with left hand. We give it usually right hand. Whenever you give something, take something. It's all based on shastras, there's a meaning behind it, you know? 
So like that, so many things we learn. Particular people from the West, they learn so many things. Don't eat with left hand. <laughs> you know, uh, how to bath, how to clean. You know, the, the West they have this idea of uh, using the toilet paper after uh, what is it, going to big one. You know, so not according to Vedas, not not pure enough. You know. And they think, oh, this is very pure, better than pouring the water. But it's not really better than pouring water. And then often they don't take bath at all, you know, for example. So they think, oh, India is so dirty and unclean. But people here take bath every day. Everybody, even the beggar on the street, finds some water and pours on his head. Most of them, 99% of them, even today. Everybody takes bath at least once. Uh, Summertime, at least twice. Everybody has clean cloth in the morning. Even the poorest person has very clean cloth in the morning. And there they wear these jeans for seven days you can wear because you cannot see wrinkles and dirt on it. <laughs> you know? And if you have perfumes, no need to take bath, just spray something in. And they consider themselves very civilized. They don't even wash hands after passing, you know. First they smear it all by paper all around. And then, you know, they, they don't even... Well, they maybe wash hands, maybe some of them wash hands. There was a survey in the um, famous L London buses and uh, remnants from the morning duties were found in all seats and all handles in the bus, you know, because the local medical society declared people are not washing hands properly after evacuating, you know. So this is uh, the British Empire the heart of British Empire, you know, you go in local bus and uh, you have to take bath after that because everything is full of inauspicious remnants by the highest class of people, Anglo-Saxons. All right. All right. So, yeah. So here are some examples from Dharma Shasta quoted by Prabhupada in Prabhupada's books. Prabhupada says, Manu, father of mankind, who has given the Manu Samhita, Manu Samhita or Manu Smriti, don't get confused. If you say Samhita, we usually refer to Vedas. Vedas have Brahmana, Aryanaka, Samhita, and Upanishad portion. But here Samhita also refers to Smriti Shastras. So Manu, Manu Smriti or Manu Samhita, it's the same thing. In that law, it is stated, famous one, Pita Rakshati Komare, Bharta Rakshati Yovane, Putrastu Sthavire Bhave, Nastriyam Svatantra Marhati. This we heard hundred times, uh, Prabhupada's, at least translation we heard. In the Manusmit, it is said that woman should not be given independence, but should be given protection by her father, husband, and elderly son. In all circumstances, woman should remain dependent upon some guardian. So this is one example just given, example of the, one of the famous quotes. Now, but today people, when they read this, uh, ah, Manu, woman hater. <laughs> But they don't understand what is a woman. What is a woman? Woman is jiva, atma, just like you and me. All jivas are equal, but just condition in the body of woman this lifetime. We are conditioned body of male this lifetime. The dog is same jiva condition in the body of dog in this lifetime. So everybody has different duty, different, different system to uplift, to purify oneself. That's what it is. So therefore, uh, it is given that Nastriya uh, Swatantra should not be given independence. Now, independence doesn't mean you put a chain and lock her up and you know beat her and all this abuse which is done in the in the past by some. Definitely, some people did misuse of these statements. No, but what is what is the point? What is the point? The point is that Manu understood the mentality the nature of the soul condition in the female body, the nature of the soul condition dog's body. Soul condition dog's body it barks and bites, correct? So you must predict, when dog is there, watch out, take a stick. Oh, dog haters. No, but we know how dogs behave, you know. We have, you know, Shaza says, any animals with horn, be aware, you know? You may pet the cow, pet the cow, you go and pet the bull. But if you are not attentive, you may be hit by the bull also. And then, oh, I was petting him, feeding him, and he hit me. That's the bull. That's exactly the definition of the bull. That's what you describe as the bull. 
That's what Shasta says. Animals with the horns, do not trust. Be aware whenever you see animals with the horns. So you see, this is what Shasta predicts. So when soul is in body of woman has different condition, soul in body of man is different condition. And Prabhupada explains. As far as internal cleanliness is concerned, one should always remember the holy names of God and chant. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. The demons neither lack nor follow all these rules for external and internal cleanliness. Okay, so for chanting, for internal cleanliness, out, Prabhupada explained previous purpose. I just took from the middle of purpose. Previously, Prabhupada explained what is external cleanliness, taking three times bath a day, okay? And keep oneself clean, clothed, and this and that. Okay, then, internal, as for internal cleanliness, we chant Hare Krishna. But then Prabhupada, as for behavior, there are many rules, regulation guiding human behavior, such as the Manu Samhita, which is the law of the human race. Even up today, those who are Hindu follow the Manu Samhita. Laws of inheritance and other legalities are der der derived from this book. Many laws in Indian today, state laws, are actually coming from Manu Samhita. How to divide land, all these things, partitions, properties, uh, rights, you know, your own life, life uh, um, protection. Family protection, property protection, everything is derived from Manu Smriti. Now in the Manu Samhita, it is clearly stated that women should not be given freedom. That does not mean that women are to be kept as slaves, but they are like children. Now this is explanation. Why women are not given freedom? They are like children. Children are not given freedom, but that does not mean that they are kept as slaves. Correct. Why you are running all the way after children? Let them go and play but they will go on construction site, they'll harm themselves. It's predictable. The child will do some mess, correct? That's why all the time, all the time, you're sitting in the class, mother is sitting in the class, but one eye is always on the, it's amazing ability. One eye is on the speaker, one eye is on the child. <laughs> but mind is on the child, absolutely. So most probably, So you see, she went out. Why she went out? Because child is there. No, let him go. Give freedom, we are all free. Let him go on his own. Don't let him go on his own. I'm joking. No? There's a problem. It's predictable that child will get into trouble. Same thing, a woman roams around without husband, without father, without elder son. It's predictable that there will be trouble. And simply, today, modern people do not want to accept it. Same, no. She will, she will manage. <laughs> she will manage. Yeah? Then you have today's society. This is how it's managed. I not speak about that. You can read newspapers. Kali Yuga Purana explains very nicely. <laughs> the demons have now neglected such injunctions, and they think that women should be given as much freedom as men. However, this has not improved the social condition of the world. And that is the fact. When you have the biggest number of divorces in the, any time of history on this planet, when Manu Smritis are not followed. And that, this is a fact. This is a fact. Women are given jobs, they're given salaries, they're given independence. Why does she have to follow husband? Then every small thing. I don't like the color of your eyebrows. Divorce. I don't like the way you look at me. Divorce. I don't like the, how you drive. Divorce. Any nonsense, divorce. And then she becomes independent and exploited by others. And suffering. And then you have, what is that called? What is that called? Single mother. What is that called? Single parent. Single parent. Single parent. It's a contradiction. Parent means two. <laughs> you know, it's a sour sugar. Is it sugar or is it not sugar? You know, it cannot be sour. Single parent. Single parent is not parent. Single sufferer. That's what it is. And then who is, who is the affected party? The children. The children are brought up without father, without discipline. And then they have this Varna Shankaras. You have this, all these wild people in society who just do whatever they want to do, don't follow any law, any rule. They don't respect any authority. And you have mess in society. 
And this is, this is a fact. The bogus modern society is failure. It's failure. Communism is failure. Capitalism is failure because both are based on sense gratification. Nothing is based on Dharma. Nothing is based on the system of our nation. Actually, women should be given protection at every stage of life. She should be given protection by father in her younger days, by husband in youth, and by grown-up son in her older age. This is proper social behavior, according to Manu Samhita. But modern education has artificially devised a puffed-up concept of womanly life. And therefore, marriage is practically now an imagination in human society. Look at Prabhupada exposes. And this is 70s written. Come on, you know? 70s. Look at now. Look at today. Yeah? Situation. The social condition of women is thus not very good now. Although those who are married are in better condition than those who are proclaiming their so called freedom. The demons, therefore, do not accept any instruction which is good for society. And because they do not follow the experience of great sages, Dharma Shastras, and the rules and regulation laid down by the sages, the social condition of demoniac people is very miserable. And that's the fact. That's the fact. This is reality. Every society will tell you this. The American, American government made survey that how this uh, illicit sex started, where, the, where this all started from. In 50s, the government adver started advertising jobs for the women. And women got jobs in government first, and then in private sectors. And they start spending a lot of time, eight hours a day out of their house, and start mingling with the men in the office, in, the, in their job. And this is the, they say that even today, the biggest cause of illicit sex is relationship on the job, on the work. No? So, so this is, yeah, yeah, send your wife working. Very good idea. It's a very bad idea, no? And it is so easy to mingle. And man, man is attracted to woman. That is, again, Brahma made mind of a man to be attracted to woman. And man will see, oh, woman, no husband, no son, no father to protect. She's sitting alone there. Huh? I can accompany her as well. <laughs> Nobody is there. No? And woman, being a childish, has to be protected. Nobody protect. Gone. It's a problem. And, and karma is they understood. This is the problem. And what did they do about it? Nothing. We have a problem. They de simply helplessly declare. We, Houston, we've got the problem. <laughs> that's, the, that's the problem. They have no solution. They have no solution for it. And then if we say that women should stay home. Ah, what do you call? What is that? How they call you? How they call Gopalachari? What do they say when you are... Uh, Abuser, dinosaur, what is, <laughs> Taliban, like that. Some chosen words from the English dictionary, all the chosen words. What is that, that particular English word? What is that? Huh? Misogynist. Misogynist. We are woman hater. No, we are woman lovers. We like our wife to stay with us, you know. You allow her wherever you want to go, you know, to roam around. And now they have this concept of free marriages. Free marriages means you can have illicit sex with whoever you want. And I also have illicit sex with whoever you want. And this is called marriage. It's called free marriage, open marriages. What is that? Open marriages. It is a dog society. Dog also, one day with this one, one day with that one, sister, mother, no, nobody, other card is not asked, you know, what is your background, you know, nobody asks for your DNA, you know, just whatever job is done, you know. Hollywood, this, this is what it is. All right. So anyway, that's not the point we are discussing. We're just giving examples of Prabhupada using manuscript in his books. Another one is here. Punamno Narakad Tayate Iti Putra. Definition of son, Putra. Who is the Putra? One who saves you from falling down to hell. So the Punamno, the Pu and Triate, this Tra combined together, it means Putra. Putra means that he is supposed to relieve his father by offering Shraddha, offering Pinda. So Prabhupada explained. This is another Manusmriti quote in Prabhupada's books. Again, he quotes now from Yagyavalkya. In the rules of celibacy written by great sage Yagyavalkya, they say, Karmana Manasavacha, this famous instruction for Brahmacharis. The law of Brahmacharya is meant to help one completely abstain from sex indulgence in work, 
words and mind at all times, under all circumstances, in all places. Prabhupada quotes this in Gita. It's simply Yagyavalkya Smriti, he quotes here. Uh, this is from Chaitanya Charitamrita quoted. Varam uh, Huta Vahajwala. It is better to accept the miseries of being encaged within bars and surrounded by burning flames than to associate with those bereft of Krishna consciousness. Such, as, such association is very great hardship. Katyayana Samhita is quoted. Or Katyayana Smriti. This quoted in Hari Bhakti Vilas, quoted in Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu, and quoted in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Directly Dharma Shastra is quoted here. Okay. So this refers to uh, those who are bereft of Krishna consciousness. If you see the commentaries, you understand that it refers to demigod worshippers, refers to karma khandas, refers to all materialistic people, refers to the impersonalists who want to merge into Brahman. Whoever is not devotee, Asat Sangat Tyag, that's the message. So, <clears throat> okay, uh, what else we have? Yeah, okay, some uh, more quotes are there. Srila Prabhupada says like this, another quote from Manu Smriti. Next, the Vedic scripture Manu Samhita describes five kinds of criminals who can be punished by violence. One who kidnaps your wife, one who attacks you with lethal weapon, one who sets fire to your home, one who tries to take your land, and one who tries to give you a poison. So any one of these five or combined, if you kill him, there is no problem. There is no sin in it. If someone attacks me, shall I be non-violent? In this case of personal attack, defensive violence is natural. Violence is necessary to stop the unnecessary attack of an immoral aggressor. Look at this, it's a really good statement. So this is the idea that sometimes people say, violence should never be used, ahimsa. But you cannot. Krishna says, paritrana sadhana vinasya shadushkritam. They are good and bad elements. You cannot say that everything should be treated with non-violence. No, then the bad elements will misuse. The bad guys will misuse you. Om Shanti, Om Shanti. They'll come and kill you and take your land and everything. There was disturbance in Mayapur. Local Muslims, basically. They were attacking Mayapur. Local Gundas came also, joined them. And they were, you know, the beating devotees, attacking, stealing materials, plundering. And the latter came, complained to Prabhupada and the request to get a gun. And Prabhupada said, yeah, I don't mind you, you get a gun for protection. Oh, spiritual leader, Guru. Wanga, please, Wanga, come. Please come. So, violence is a law for the Dharma, for the protection of Dharma, not, not for the personal, personal gratification. Mm -hmm. Let me see this one. Some other quotes are there. Like Parashar Smith is quoted. One should not approach one's wife during menstrual cycle. Without doubt, such person will suffer like the killer of a Brahmana. For example, this is just one example from Parashara Smriti. One of the rules of conduct in the family life. Okay. Then, Srila Prabhupada explains like this. Uh, for Karma Kanda, there are 20 outer scriptures, such as Manu Samhita, which are known as Dharma Shastras. In these scriptures, one is advised to counteract his sinful acts by performing other types of fruitive action. Now, this is speaking about that portion of Prayashita. Remember, Achar, Yavahar, and Prayashita, three, three things in Dharma Shastra. So, this is that portion when Shukadeva Goswami is testing Maharaj Parikshit, telling him, they use just, just some Prayashita, and that is the Bhagavatam Sis Canto. This, this was the part first recommended by Shukadeva Goswami to Maharaj Parikshit. And actually, it is a fact that one who does not take to devotion service must follow the decisions of the scriptures by performing pious acts to contract his impious acts. So you see that? Okay, we are following bhakti, so we don't have to follow every single rule and regulations. Why? Why? We are walking, we are killing germs, we are killing ants, we are killing mosquitoes. When you're cooking, some puchi will be there in jira and song. You're killing? No? So, Dharma Shasta gives prayashita for that. You have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this. Okay, 
why why we don't follow all this every single rule of it because chanting of holy name is so powerful that is ultimate prayer it purifies anyhow no for example it is say that in the, the food you cook if any pooch is there or any any animal you cook, it means this small insect in the spices if you pour ghee on the food or in food is cooking ghee it becomes pure for example huh? so anyway we are offering food to krishna and anyway we are cooking in ghee automatically then correct huh? <coughs> but for example this is one of the rules There's so many rules are there so this is known as atonement the dharma shastra like manu samhita prescribed that the man who has committed murder should be hanged and his own life sacrificing atonement so what is prayajita for killing somebody you'll be killed otherwise if you take birth again suffering is more actually more suffering you get and then not only that but you are prolonging your progress if you are killed now next life immediately you are starting with free from sin but if you are not killed now simply put in jail next life you will be killed so all life you are in jail and then in next life you will be killed also and then you are you are losing one life in the progress no previously this system was followed all over the world but since people are becoming atheists they're stopping capital punishment so we hare krishnas we are singing and dancing but we are for capital punishment and we are against abortions and we are against divorce it's a, we are st- this is based on vedic culture shastra so stopping vedic capital punishment proper said this is not wise here it is said that the physician who knows how to diagnose disease prescribes medicine accordingly if the disease is very serious the medicine must be strong the weight of a murderer's sin is very great and therefore according to manu samhita a murderer must be killed by killing a murderer the government shows mercy to him because if a murderer is not killed in this lifetime he will be killed and forced to suffer many times in future lives since people do not know about the next life and the intricacies working of nature they manufacture their own laws but they should be properly consult the established injunction of shastras and act accordingly in india even today the hindu community often takes advice from an expert scholars regarding how to counteract sinful activities in christianity also there is a process of confession confession and atonement therefore atonement is required and atonement must be undergo according to gravity of one sinful activity this is uh, still going on in india even today hindu community go to the scholar what to do we had madhva family here and the old grandmother she was little uh, healthy uh the body was a little bigger and night time she went to the bathroom and she stepped on the cat and cat tata de hantara prapti cat left the body so immediately they consulted the scholar and he advised that the small form of the cat should be carved in the gold gold maybe gold foil or something but small small figure of cat in the gold should be offered in rameshwaram and puja should be done and bathing in all the 29 wells of rameshwaram temple and all family went to be free from the sin of killing a cat according to vedas this is atonement you no know? and what the western people do he steps on the cat kills the cat a stupid cat that's what he says no consideration jiva is also there in body of you see con- consciousness is different because knowledge is different because knowledge is different from ignorance that's what this is different you know so christians have some concept of atonement but that is like batting of an elephant elephant takes bath and then comes on the bank and immediately smells some mud on the back no so the christians once a week you have to go and oh father i've seen oh okay do this prayer and this prayer don't do again okay the next week again there was one famous uh, famous priest in italy quite saintly person it seems uh, padre pio he was famous as stigmata and recognized by the church as a very saintly person and if person would come two three times for same sin confessing to him he would shout and kick them out from the church. never come back again you rascal again you do. same thing you are coming every week <laughs> So the concept is there but now became ritual 
just ritual, just, okay, confess, and then again do nonsense in Monday. What's the use? What is the point? But it's a meaningless, meaningless. But concept was there. Again, Prabhupada says, uh, in Parashara Smriti, or religious cause made by Parashara, the great sage and father of Yasadev, it state, Kshatriya hi praja rakshan shastra pani pradandaya. So Kshatriya's duty is to protect citizens from all kinds of difficulties. And for that reason, he has to apply violence in suitable cases for law and order. Therefore, he has to conquer the soldier of inimical kings. And thus, with religious principle, he should rule over the world. So again, Parashara Smita is quoted now by Prabhupada. So you see how much Dharma Shastra is quoted. So who say we are not following Manu and, and Yagya Valka and, and Parashara and Dharma Shastra? We follow. Why? Because that makes society better, easier to chant Hare Krishna. No? If you follow all the rules of Manu, dress code, bath code, food code, everything is good. If you accept the Chandala, Mlecha's culture, how, how you will change peacefully? Okay, from tomorrow, all ladies should wear miniskirts and we should all sit mingling together. No need to be vegetarian, eat any food you want. Alcohol is allowed because this nature's culture is for that. And then we'll chant together Hare Krishna. Hmm? How do you feel? Hey, some are smiling. Hey, it's a good idea. <laughs> well, but nobody will be able to chant Hare Krishna. We'll be again back to animal state, you know? Just like hippies, they chant Hare Krishna and then what do they do? They do all sense gratification. What's the point? What's the point? Point is that you're doing Nama Para. It will go on for many, 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 many lifetimes to change, you know? Yeah? But if you say, oh, please dress nicely, don't wear tight clothes, don't show your body, speak respectfully to the ladies, no? Treat, maltreat what Paradhar is. Treat all the ladies as your mother, except your wife, no? Oh, you are dinosaur, you are Taliban, you are, you, are, you know, madman, you are, you are misogynist, you are this and you are that. that you, so bad, you know, so bad. Huh? So what is better? You tell, what is better? It's so simple example, just plain truth. You want wild society, unrestricted animal society, you can chant Hare Krishna, you can go home back to water if you can. You know? No? So what do you want? More destruction or less destruction? Less destruction you want. You want more criminals in society or less? You want less. Correct? No? At least in our colony we have grihastas living together. At least you know. Children can go any house, eat prasadam. They can freely play around. There's no criminals. Nobody will harm them. No one will kidnap them. No one will kill them. In America you can't do that. You just children playing around, everything, you know, there's a fear. Somebody will come kidnap them, somebody will kill them, somebody will rape them. Pedophiles are there. Idiots who are attracted with the, with the children for sexual um, abuse. No? So which society is better? Come on. And now there's a, oh, we should give equal rights to women, equal rights to children. Don't shout at children in the school. Don't beat children in the school. So, of course, we are asking, be them, you know, like animals or something, but this discipline must be there. Danda is there. No? This description, the sword was created from the heaven. And I think Bible also says something like that, that rod of punishment comes from the heaven, something like that. All right. So here, Prabhupada quotes again. So here is one Shastra with him from Parashara Smriti. Parashara was father of Yasa. He, he has got his regulatory principles. They also realize souls on Vedic principles. So Prabhupada explains that who is Parasha. Realize souls on Vedic principles. They wrote so many books. In this Parasha Smriti, they said, Shatrahi Prajarakshan, same shloka is quoting, but now Prabhupada explained. Shastrapani. Shastrapani means always with sword in the hand for the benefit of Prajas. He should be so strong. Or your thief, you're stolen. Immediately cut his hand. Bas. <laughs> Immediately cut his hand, boss. This one example will stop millions of thieves not to commit stealing. <coughs> Simply by cutting. Even a hundred years ago, this system was prevalent in Kashmir. If a thief is arrested, if he's proved that he has stolen, immediately king will cut off his two hands. Boss, finish. No court witnesses. 
and it will go for 10 years to find out whether he has stolen. This is government. Today, court case, as I'm experienced, is <coughs> going on for years. <laughs> Therefore, the injunction is Kshatriya hi prajarakshan, Shastra pani pradandayan, always must be with stick. This is a dharma. In Manusmriti, it is said that if a man murdered, one man has killed another man. Why man? Even animal, he's murderer. Now, murdering is no offense. Today's society, murdering is no offense. They are killing daily so many babies within the womb. Murderers. In India, they give a nice title they call family planning. <laughs> family killing, rascal, be plain. We know the English language. Family planning, family killing. That has become a custom. They are killing hundreds and thousands of animals daily in the slaughterhouse. It has become a custom. So now even human beings, murder, he is not condemned to death. Is it not? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. This means everyone is sinful. Everyone is sinful. The government is sinful. The people are sinful. Then how you can become happy? It is a fool's paradise. Sinful paradise. It's illusion that we'll be happy. How can you be happy? Therefore, despite all sorts of education, scientific improvement, brainwash, and so many things, people are unhappy. Disease, unhappy, dissatisfaction, confusion, this is going on. Because everything is not properly done. The government is not strict. So in Manu Smriti, as I'm quoting from Parashara Smriti, the Smriti Shastra, Manu Smriti is to say that if a man commits murder, then he should be killed. Otherwise, he'll suffer in next life. So many sufferings. So the king ordered to condemn a murderer to death is a mercy. It's a mercy for him because he's saved from future so many troubles. So the king should be so strict, not that by compassion. No, he's murderer. That's all right. He has killed one man. Why he should be killed? No, he must be killed. This is the law. It also found, Parashara Smith, it is said that Kshatriya should be always Shastrapani and must strictly. As soon as there is any discrepancy, he must stay. So this is, uh, this is what Prabhupada says. This is what we follow. Okay, so Prabhupada explains the importance of the Manusmriti. The Manusmriti is an example of the standard of Brahmanical culture. Look at this. The standard of Brahmanical culture. That all people are uplifted to the culture, civilized life. You cannot trace out from the history when the Manu Smriti was written, but it is considered so perfect that it is the Hindu law. There is no need for legislature to pass a new lay, new law daily to adjust social order. The law given by Manu is so perfect that it can be applicable for all the time. It is stated in Sanskrit to be tricolado, which means good for past, present, and future. Look at this statement, no? They say, ah, those, those days, Manu was okay. Now he's not applying. But that's not what Prabhupada said. Prabhupada said, Trikalaudo. Trikalaudo. Past, present, future, Manu Smriti works. No need to invent new laws. You see this? So, here, Prabhupada speaks. It is duty of guardians of children to revive the divine consciousness dormant in them. Another Smriti Shastra. Now, if you have children, you have to make them Krishna conscious. Then, Ten processes of reformatory ceremonies, as enjoyed in Manu Smriti. Ten samskaras are to be performed, which is the guide to religious principles, are meant for reviving God consciousness in the system of Vanasham. However, no process is strictly followed now in any part of the world, and therefore 99 per 9 percent of the population is Naradama, Naradama, the lowest of men. So, what do we do in Iskon? What are the samskaras we do? We chant 50 rounds before we getting the children try to be Krishna conscious, fully conscious that we are we are invoking one soul to come in our family, and we promise to Krishna we are going to do our best, provide the best circumstances that this soul never takes birth again. <coughs> Excuse me. This is the service of the, the parents that they should see that my children do not take birth again. This is my duty. Then you can have hundreds of children, if that's the consciousness, if that is the facility be able to provide. If you can provide such a Krishna conscious atmosphere, then no problem having children. And that's the attitude, that's the duty, that's the system. No? Okay. 
So another Dharma Shastra in Prabhupada's books. There are eight forms of marriage mentioned in scriptures, Manusmit. But only one process of marriage, Brahma or Rajasika marriage, is now current. Other kinds of marriage by love, by exchange of garlands, by kidnapping brides are now forbidden in this Kali age. No? So this, this uh, Manu says all eight kinds of marriages are there and they are performed. But Kali Yuga, some extra restrictions are given. Still some countries practice. I think Kazakhstan, Kazan, Kazakhstan, they still, uh, till recently, that kidnapping of the girl, that was the system of marriage. That there was some, uh, who show, somebody show us a clip from the documentary of this Kazakhstan kidnapping brides. Uh, the girl is walking on the street and car stops and four boys come and put the girl in the car and take her home. And home, everything is set up. Already marriage ceremony is going on, you know? And, uh, and girl is shouting, shouting, screaming, screaming in the car. When she comes home, she everything is set up. All right. Then she starts smiling, very happy. Oh, this is the culture. My mother was kidnapped. My grandmother was kidnapped. So I'm also kidnapped. This is our tradition. And she is completely cool about it, you know? Nowadays, they admit that they, they contact parents before, but they don't inform the girl. So parents are also ready for marriage, then everything is set up, you know, and, but girl must be kidnapped. So you see, that was described by Manu Smithy and some remnants of that still there. It's amazing, you know, and they're cool about it. It's not, you know, okay, okay, I'm not advocating it. Prabhupada is very clear how we should get married. Sacrificial fire should be there, cool down. Gokul, Gokul said on the class, you can kid me. Okay. One should follow the principle laid down in Shrutis and Smritis, not only in one's spiritual life, but in material life as well. Look at what Prabhupada said. You follow, now we just chant. We just Hare Krishna, Hare. We don't have to follow anything, but we just chant. We are not following Vedic, we are not following caste system. You want to introduce caste system again? We don't want to follow. Look what Prabhupada said. Look at this one. One should follow principle laid down in Shrutis and Smritis, not only about bhakti, not only spiritual life. But in material life as well. Why? 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 Because restrict us not to be animals. Restrict us. Dharmas are like a raised bank of the river, protecting the river overflows. The mind will be controlled. The senses will be controlled. Proper conduct is conducive. The higher modes will be invoked. Lower modes will be subdued. It's better society by following Manu. It's better, it's better for Krishna. Why in India is easier to practice Krishna Bhakti? Because the society is more conducive for Krishna consciousness than the West. Why village is better than the city? Because it's less, less of the modes. No, modes are, why? Why all this life, self-sufficient, growing your own food, living on the farm is better than working in factory because of presence of different modes. No, rishis, at the, you can see in Mahabharata description, Rishis in, in Satya Yoga, they were living in forests. They won't build a house. They're just living under trees or wherever, under bushes, in the tree, cover themselves. They, and then some Rishis got together. They were, the Rishis at the beginning, they were just eating roots, fruits, leaves, whatever, for sustenance. Then some Rishis got together, went to the bank of river and make a few cottages with mud and start growing their own grains. And rishis in forest, degradation has started. That was first village form. And they are, you see, they are not fully depending on God anymore. They cannot live in forest. So they are now make society that they make degradation has started. So pure sattva good means you live in the forest. Second class village, then became bigger village, then became city, then became hellish city. <laughs> Then became these mega cities, which is just hell, you know, just, 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 you know, horrible. What is it? 20 million people living, you know. Anyway, you know, nothing to discuss. Okay, now Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur gives commentary on Bhagavatam Shloka. The Shloka says like this. Uh, By following the Vedic ritualistic ceremonies or undergoing atonement, Sinful men do not become as purified as by chanting once the holy name of Lord Hari. So you see, all these uh, rules, regulations are difficult to follow. Brahmacharya, Vanapras, Sanyas, 
what brahmachari and sannyas today there's a problem you know previously they were protected by society previously ladies knew how to behave men knew how to behave they were protected now wherever you go there is a lady even on the, 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 the toilet cleaning solution there is a lady also smiling at you you know everywhere advertisement is there cinemas and western countries you can't avoid wherever you go you go to buy something you to travel everywhere the, the ladies are there sensually dressed you know and they are free feeling free to talk to you they are free to seduce you then where is a brahmachari who can do brahmachari in kali yuga how is it possible how is it possible it's so difficult society is not conducive is very difficult but we have the power of the holy name we have mercy of chaitanya mahaprabhu we have mercy of krishna in the form of chaitanya mahaprabhu and through prabhupad we have we got the holy name this is the power of holy name we stick to that and to our rules regulation for regulated prince and we try our best we have to go to these short books we have to go to preach you cannot avoid the woman rishya shringa did not work remember the story of ramaya did not work simply i don't want to see the woman sometimes the what you become at big i don't want to talk to the, i don't want to see the woman and i know all the time thinking of woman means it is impossible is impossible to avoid but we have to control ourselves by being engaged in the devotional service by hearing constantly by chanting attentively we have to get the strength from the holy name and from the following of of uh, shila prabhupada's instruction then then we can survive where is the question in there is no one ashrama how can you be sanyas it's so difficult therefore is even prohibited in shastras for regular mayavadi the regular vanasham sanyas that's prohibited only vaishnavas can take because they have shelter of the holy name it's very difficult you know so here all the ritualistic atonement may be free from sinful reaction it does not awaken devotional service unlike the chanting of lord's names which reminds one of lord's fame qualities attributes pastimes and paraphernalia so here this is what bhagavatam says by following vedic ritualist ceremonies of doing prayashita also see for men do not become purified as purified as by chanting once the holy name of hari so this is our shelter vishnu chakravarti thakur prabhupad quotes vishnu chakravarti thakur in prepad here Shri Vishnu Chakravarti Tagu comments that the chanting of holy name of Lord has special significance that distinguishes it from the Vedic ritualistic ceremonies or atonement for severe, more severe, or more severe sinful actions. Oh, this is I have to read the purport to the end. So here, what is the severe, more severe, and more severe sinful actions? Sorry, I just read the purport to the end. It's very short. Now here. in prepot this is linked this quote is linked to the prepot sins means nations nations means ignorance the root of all sins ignorance is the root of all sins i do not know that i am eternal servant of krishna i do not know that i am spiritual i have eternal relation to krishna and sinful desire also the greatest uh, inequities the greatest inequities means very big sin no and sins flowing from them and the ordinary sins these three gradations of sins are given here and you can see prabhupad wrote in this paper the same thing severe more severe and more severe you will see in next quote this is given uh this this is explained here the pataka sin maha pataka ati pataka this is different gradations of sin according to manu the 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 different different uh, sins are there and the holy name can eradicate all of them so here you can see this uh, in the purport yeah the greatest inequities this is this atipatakam the greatest sin following them sin mahapatakam and patakam ordinary sins these three are just translated in english here all sorts of unprincipled conduct okay so these are this different categories of sins described here so which is root cause all the all the ignorance so according to manu smriti five heinous sins mahapatakas are described killing of brahmana 
drinking liquor, stealing, committing adultery with wives of one's guru, and associating with those who are engaged in such a great sins. So these are some examples from Manus Mahaprabhu Buddhist Mahabhat. And then they are given atonement, how to get purified. If you do this, how to do? If you perform any of this, what is there to be done as a prayashita? Like that. So, so here the Vishnu Chakra Thakur explains this, that the holy name is ultimate prayashita, and this is our shelter. Here, the oldest um, Manu, Manu Samhita and Parasha Samhita. But here it says that although one may become free from reaction to the most sinful activities by following religious principle of the scriptures, this cannot promote sinful men to the stage of loving service to the Lord. So Parashita may counteract reaction. You do some sin, you may counteract reaction. But the tendency to do sin, the kutam is still in the heart. The tendency to commit sin, that will be removed by the holy name only. There's no other way. On the other hand, chanting the holy name of Lord even once not only frees one immediately from the reactions of greater sin, but also raises one to the platform of rendering law and service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is described as Uttama Shloka because he is famous for his glorious activities. So that, this is the purpose goes simply like this. All glories to Sri Krishna Sankirtan. Param Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtanam. This is our shelter. Okay. So these are other, other um, quotes that holy name can purify from this Mahapatakas, from these all great sins. Here the quote from Brahma Vivarta Purana. If one kills Brahmana or drinks liquor excessively out of desire, by chanting the name of Krishna day and night, one becomes purified. Adivaraha Purana says similar. O king, he who chants the auspicious names of Krishna turns to ashes 10 millions of the war sins. So you can see here, Mahapataka, he said, no? So, so these are all, you know, different, different uh, categories of sin contracted from Dharma Shastra by the atonement, Prayashita, and by holy name, fully eradicated. Then you see the shloka explains this, no? That Dharma uh, Tapapa Nicha Shutaya Stapamsi. So the now we are discussing this Dharma, Papa, and now Shutis, Tapasya, and the Jivas. So here the purport describes this now, that um, the category of the Shuti means Rik Sama, Rik Sama, Yajur and Atarva, and Upanishads, which form the crash jewels of the Vedas. We were discussing before the Vedas and the visions, but here the point is, they all come from Krishna. That's the point. And the knowledge inside given by Krishna. Vedanta Krit, Veda Vid, Eva Chaha. Krishna given knowledge and his compiler of Vedanta. The tapa, tapas. Tapas literally means the fire, heat. Tapas means the heat. Tapas means all regular practices that are learned with a view of attainment of the proper function of the self. So Prabhupada gives definition of austerity. Austerity means accepting voluntarily some difficulties for higher development. Voluntarily accepting difficulties. Fasting, we are fasting. We are rising early in the morning. We are taking cold bath sometimes. No, we don't eat outside. So many things are there. Okay, so this is the definition. In many, oops, what happened to this? In many cases, in the form known as panchatapas, these practices are of a difficult character. Pancha tapas is uh, described by Prabhupada also. Pancha tapas. Um, Prabhupada explains in Bhagavatam 4 Canto. Pancha tapa refers to fine kinds of heating processes because tapa means the heat. One is enjoined to sit within a circle of fire with flames blazing from four sides and the sun blazing directly overhead. So, fifth one is sun. In the summertime, Yogi will put four fires around him and sit on the sun and meditate. Panchatapa. Hmm? This is one kind of panchatapa recommended for austerity. There are others also recommend tapa. In rainy season, one is enjoyed to expose himself to torrents of rain and in winter to sit in cold water up to the neck. As far as bedding is concerned, the ascetic should be content with simply laying on the floor. The purpose of undergoing such severe austerity is to become devotee of the Supreme Personality of Krishna, 
as explained in the next verse. So all these things are also the process and the power of tapa. That's also given by Krishna. That's what Brahma Samhita says. Okay. And then processes are difficult. These practices are of difficult character. Yoga with its eight constitutes limbs. Yoga is also counted as tapas. Why yoga is counted under tapas? And the jnanas, the knowledge of undifferentiated Brahman, impersonal knowledge, also included in this tapas. Why? Yoga, what yoga has to do with tapas? Yoga has to do everything with tapas, <laughs> you know. Okay, I'll just give you an example. You know there are eightfold systems, yama, niyama, pranayam, pratyahar, dharana, jnana, samadhi. Yeah, I mean, any? Hmm? What? Asanas, yes, asanas. All right, so yama, niyama, pranayama, asana, something like that. All right, so here the yama, what yama means? Yama means one should be full of truthfulness, compassion, tolerance, courage, moderation in eating, sincerity. For example, then explanation of each of these one in the given in detail. For example, sincerity is being truthful in thought word and deed, while performing prescribed action and avoiding prohibited ones. Celibacy, no stealing, non-violence, cleanliness. You see in Yama, Yama, what comes? Yogi, yogi has to do first this. So we also asking this. People going for yoga, yoga for better sex. You, soulmate yoga, you are unmarried. Come, we'll do yoga together. We will get married. If not married, at least you'll get pregnant. Something will happen. Yeah? Nonsense. No, look at this. Truthfulness, compassion, tolerance, courage, moderation, celibacy, yoga for pregnancy. Where is the question yoga for pregnancy, celibacy you have to follow? Where is the question? You understand how cheating is going on in the name. This is not yoga. Yoga without yama is good. And then niyamas, again, tapas, contentment, faith, charity, piety, study, sense of shame, attention, chanting, and rituals. You, you see this. And then, when these are followed, yama and niyamas, only a person who has held to these rules of discipline and control is eligible for further practice of postures and breathing. Then only asana pranayam. No? And now first, only asana pranayam, yama, niyama, hare krishna, not follow. Then, how you, you're jumping from third ladder. But you cannot, you cannot climb to the third and fourth ladder without following first two. It's not possible. It's cheating. Okay. And then we have a little bit more of the purpose. All these are so many distinct features with the revolving round of the fruitive activities of the conditioned souls. <laughs> Look at this statement. The conditioned souls are embarked on a sojourn of successive births from 84 legs of varieties of generated, generating organs. So a jiva is traveling through 84 legs of species, no? pulled by desire to enjoy. So this Dharma Shastra gives you rules, regulations, that they satisfy your desire, but they purify you, they uplift you. They are different, they are differentiated into different orders of beings. Now, Jiva in their desire, according to the coverings of the three modes, may be taken birth as Devatas, as Dhanavas, Rakshasas, Manavas, Nagas, Kinaras, and Gandharvas. These Jivas, from Brahma down to the small insect, are infinite in time. They make up the aggregate of the conditioned souls from the degree of Brahma to that of the little fly. And they are the dis distinguished features within the revolving wheel of the karma. Every jiva, whether devata, Brahma, small insect, has some particular power and ability, has particular quality that is showing, has particular activity. All these are coming from Govinda. All these powers are there in Krishna. Every one of them is endowed with distinct powers, achintya shakti as individuals, and is powerful in a particular sphere. No, Brahma can create. I cannot. We cannot create the universe, you know I mean? But Brahma can do that. Bird can fly. Peacock can sing, dance, like that. But these powers are by their nature not fully developed in them. The degree of power and nature of property vary according to the measure or manifestation, or the possession of the individual conferred upon him by Sri Govind. So how much power he displays, how much abilities he display, how much this much, how much Krishna given to him for a particular 
body for a particular purpose, for a particular status in the universe. Okay, so it's very long class, I didn't expect. So Prabhupada quotes Paurushandra Shu. Krishna says, I'm ability in the man. And uh, Prabhupada concludes. Okay, this is the last one. Prabhupada gives conclusion. Now Darwin and other material sciences are trying to understand phenomena, Krishna's energy. But they are not interested in knowing the source of this energy. Krishna says, Aham Sarvasya Prabhava. I'm source of all spiritual and material worlds. If you are Krishna conscious, we know that Krishna is the original source of all energy. If a person becomes a chemist or physicist, his duty should be to prove that Krishna is the original source of all energy. Then his knowledge of chemistry and physics is perfect. People want knowledge through the modern scientific method. Therefore, if one is real scientist, it is his duty to prove that this material energy is coming from Krishna. If one is a biologist, naturalist, it is his duty to prove that all life forms are coming from Krishna. Unfortunately, scientists are thinking, oh, we shall create something. But they cannot create anything because God is doing all the creating. They are trying to imitate God, just as a child seeing his mother cooking. Oh, I shall cook too. It's childish play. And for this play, they are spending much labor and many billions of dollars. They try to create a human in the test tube, but every day many humans are being born. They're trying to create something artificial, that's all. By God's multi energies, everything is being created automatically. All ingredients are given by Krishna. You, your intelligence, your body are given by Krishna. He gives us everything, and we cannot do anything without Him. When we act, we should try to satisfy Krishna. Then our action will be successful. It is not possible to go outside the boundaries of Krishna. Okay, I'll stop here. I'll, I'll, I apologize, a little longer lecture, but you know, we are living in India. At least you can, people can relate here to Dharma Shastra much better than in Western society, which is uh, based on the idea of sense gratification. And they are, even our devotees, amazingly, they influence so much by the Western egalitarian understanding and uh, really, they want to create society which is not conducive for Krishna consciousness. They're just putting themselves in trouble. Is it not better to respect male and female, have proper behavior, chant together, serve together? Yeah, we are not this body that we know theoretically, but who has realized it? No? If you put butter on the fire, no? Then, then it will melt. So there are some rules, regulations should be followed till we become fully liberated. And once we are liberated, again, you have to follow same rules, regulation, to give example to others. So anyway, this is a nice shloka from Brahma Samhita. And okay, I'll stop here. Thank you very much. Shila Prabhupada Ki Hare Krishna.